ever had that moment uh you're trying to chill out maybe listen to some music and suddenly your smart speaker decides now's the time for like death metal oh yeah they're like yeah. where did that even come from it happens all the time right yeah and it's usually because some gadget somewhere is making decisions for us not really asking permission so today we're diving into a really cool idea a way to flip that script we're talking about AI that actually asks before acting. Right. And asks in a way that actually makes sense, not just a yes or no button buried in settings you'll never find. Exactly. And thankfully, this isn't some far off sci-fi dream. We've got some solid proposals to dig into. Blueprints for how this could actually work. Yeah. And the core idea across all of them is this shift, right? From AI that just reacts to us to AI that's more proactive. Like it's trying to figure out what we want before we even have to ask. Okay. So less about us programming the machine and more about it understanding us. Exactly. So how do we get there? Well, one proposal that really caught my eye is this idea of an AI consent chip. Okay, consent chip sounds intriguing. Break that down for me. What is that? So imagine this. Every device you own, your phone, your TV, even your coffee maker, has this tiny little chip built in. Okay. And this chip, it's like a personal bodyguard for your data. It intercepts every single command, every data request, everything, before it even gets to your device's brain. So like a gatekeeper. Exactly. And it's not just blindly blocking stuff. It's cross-referencing everything with your own personal AI agent. Hold on, AI agent. You've lost me. We're giving AI even more power. Well, think of it like this. This AI agent, it's learned your habits, your preferences, your privacy limits, basically everything about how you use your tech. Okay, so it's like it knows me better than I know myself digitally. In a way, yeah. So let's say someone's trying to connect to your smart speaker to blast their music through it. Oh, yeah. Been there, got the t-shirt. Right. But this time, instead of your speaker just blindly connecting, that little consent chip steps in. It checks in with your AI agent like, hey, is this cool right now, knowing what we know about what the user wants? So my AI agent using everything it knows about me gets to decide if it's cool or not exactly time of day who else is around even stuff like if your fitness tracker says you're stressed it factors that in wow talk about taking control of your tech that's way better than digging through settings menus hoping to find the one toggle that actually does what you want right and it means you're not relying on some company's idea of what your privacy should look like it's all you that is seriously cool but okay i gotta ask wouldn't all these AI agents and chips just bog everything down? Like, I can barely get my phone to load as it is. That's a valid concern, for sure. But they've thought about that. They've got this system called, get this, cached consent. Cached consent. Sounds like something you'd clear out of your browser history. It's kind of similar, actually. Like, your browser remembers your login for your favorite sites. Your AI agent remembers what you've okayed before for routine things. Oh, I see. So if I always listen to music at a certain volume in my living room, it wouldn't need to ask every single time. Exactly. It learns those patterns. It's all about making it smooth, not adding extra steps, unless something truly out of the ordinary pops up. You get peace of mind without sacrificing convenience. Okay, so that's inside our devices. But what about out in the world? Like if I'm out and about and some piece of tech wants to access, I don't know, my location or something. Right, and that's where this gets really wild. One of the proposals talks about consent alerts, and it's like, Imagine you're walking through a park, your phone buzzes. Oh no, not another notification. But this one's different. It says, hey, that tourist over there, their camera's about to snap a pic and you might be in the background and want to give a thumbs up or... Hold on, really? Like, it would recognize me in a crowd and everything? That's the idea. It's not that far off, honestly. We've already got facial recognition, location tracking, all the pieces are there. The difference here is it's not some company using it to track you. It's about giving you, the individual, more control. Okay, I see where you're going with this, but uh, yeah. doesn't that open up a whole other can of worms? Like, what about those gray areas? Hey, I'm in that park, someone's playing music, who gets to decide how loud is too loud? Yeah, that's the challenge, right? It's not just about yes or no, it's about figuring out those nuances. One idea they talk about is like a group decision thing. All the AI agents in the area, they chat, figure out what works for most people. Wait, hold up, the AI agents are chatting with each other like in the background you wouldn't even know it's happening but your agent might be like hey uh most folks are cool with the music but if you want quiet want to move over there a bit okay so let's about hard rules and more like digital courtesy more than that even it's about who gets to decide right now it's companies with our data our attention this flips that puts you in charge of your own digital experience 
And that has huge implications, not just for like privacy, but even bigger stuff like social justice, how we treat each other online. Okay, that's a lot to unpack. But let's say all this does happen. One thing that worries me is not everyone's a tech whiz, right? Mm -hmm. What about folks who don't want an AI making choices for them or people who can't even afford the latest gadgets? Wouldn't this just create a whole new divide? Absolutely a valid concern, and the proposals do address that. Like in the protection chips one, they talk about different levels of control. So you could be totally hands off, let your AI agent handle everything. Or, or you want to be the one to okay every little thing. Exactly. More notifications, more prompts, however you're comfortable. So it's adaptable based on your tech comfort level. Right. The goal isn't to exclude anyone. It's about making sure everyone has a say, whether they're super techie or just figuring things out. Because this stuff, it's changing how we interact, not just with our devices, but with the world around us. It's wild to think, right? Like, we're not just figuring out how to use tech. We're figuring out how we want to coexist with it. And how it changes us even. Like, if we start expecting our devices to ask for consent, maybe we start expecting that from each other more, you know? Even in little ways. Oh, that is a really interesting thought. Like, it spills over from the digital to the real world. Exactly. Think about it. Instead of being bombarded by ads and notifications constantly, what if you had the power to decide exactly how and when you interact with all that? That would be amazing, honestly. Right. And that's what these proposals are getting at. This isn't just about making tech easier to use. It's way deeper than that. It's about taking back some control over our own lives, you know, in a world that feels more and more chaotic. It's like putting our values into the technology itself instead of just hoping for the best. And the best part, these aren't just pie-in-the-sky ideas. These proposals really lay out how this could work step by step. Okay, so for our listeners out there, maybe a little overwhelmed with all this, what's the one thing they should take away from all of this? Don't check out. I know it sounds super complicated, but these conversations, they're going to shape the future, literally. So ask questions, speak up, tell these companies what you expect from your tech. It's like we're not just along for the ride. Yeah. We get to steer a little bit. Exactly. This is it. This is the time to decide what we want this digital world to look like. So let's make it something good, something human. And on that note, one last thing to chew on before we go. Imagine every device, every bit of AI, it has this like Bill of Rights, a set of rules it can't break no matter what. What would your Bill of Rights for tech look like? What would make you feel truly respected in this digital age? That's something to think about. This has been a deep dive into the future of consent and AI, a future we are all creating together. Until next time, keep questioning, keep demanding better, and most importantly, keep imagining the possibilities.